everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cristana. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button, subscribe button, and then hit the bell. I have a little guest here again. Look who I found. <laughs> okay, so this is part two. Sorry, you can come back in. <laughs> I was like, get over there so we can surprise them. This is Desiree, my good friend. If you guys did not see part one, I'm gonna put the video up here. We were working on a dresser last, well, earlier this week, yeah. and there's a nightstand in that dresser and she sold it within two hours of putting it up. But we haven't done the nightstand. We allowed the client to kind of pick what they wanted and the dresser is, well. So the dresser was painted in juniper which is a limited color, come on, why not, oh there you go, juniper, which is a limited color release, it's like a kind of earthy green, and the nightstand is going to be a different color, because she's going for kind of a boho vibe, and if you guys don't know what boho is, it's a mixture, it's an eclectic thing of different colors. Yeah. It's not matchy-matchy. Not matchy-matchy, different wood tones, things like that. And so our client is actually going to step out of her comfort zone and allow us to do the nightstand in a different color, which this is not a joke. This is not a joke. What color is this? This is, this is white. Desiree, have you ever known me to paint white? No. No. She makes me paint my own white furniture. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, Okay, so cashmere is the color we're gonna be using. It is another one of the re limited release fall colors, which will be available actually tomorrow. So this video should be posted on Tuesday. So tomorrow it will be available and we'll put the link in there. But we're gonna be doing white. I'm gonna explain why I'm gonna do white. So if you wanna see this video, keep watching. Stay here, stay here, stay. I'm gonna make her Don't stay go here. anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so one of the reasons why, first of all, our, you know, I say our client, it's not my client anymore, it's her client. She paint, she did it, she did it, she sold it. These colors are gonna go really good together. It's gonna give a good vo boho vibe, it's going to have an earthy vibe, but they are neutral enough that she's not too scared, right? Because yeah. we know we like color. Yeah. But in video one, I told you guys that Desiree is gonna be moving to New Mexico, right? And she's going to be starting her furniture flipping journey. And I think it's really important for her to know how to properly paint white. As much as I'm not a fan of white, a lot of people are. She may need to paint some furniture white. It depends. Some people say in their region of the world, white does not sell. Some people say that's all they want. So it's very important for her to know how to do it the proper way. And when I say proper way, I mean the prep that goes into it is important and then knowing how to seal it, all the things. So she needs to know what the proper prep is because she's gonna be doing furniture. And what if someone wants a custom piece and they want white? So I'm gonna give it to her. I'm gonna show her how to do it. We are going to be building the base the same on the nightstand that we did on the dresser, but because it's smaller, and a couple people asked for maybe some more beginner tools. We're gonna play around with some hand tools and hand saws. I'm still gonna walk her through it because, have you used hand saws a lot? Yeah. Like a hacksaw? Definitely uh, have used one of those. Okay. It's a workout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are going to go downstairs and start with this dresser. We're going to do the base first. And then when we're done doing that, we will bring it up here and then we will start prepping it for paint and getting it ready and all the good things. So, let's rock it. Ready? Ready. Let's roll. You know that I love you when I'm painting white with you. I know. I do think that this is important. A lot of people ask me this, so fine, I can stay. I'm getting out of my comfort zone for you guys. She hates white. I do. <laughs> it's not, it is the absence of color. But don't feel bad. If you like white, that's your thing, you know? Like, I like bright pink and a lot of yeah. people don't like it. Look, so. you have pink hair. Yeah. <laughs> you can't... Yeah. It's kind of... Not just... like color if you have pink hair. Yeah. It's funny because people always ask me what my house looks like. And I'm like, there's... It's, it's colorful. colorful. Yeah. It's colorful. It's colorful. But it all goes together. Yeah. That's right. It flows. You better say that. Yeah. 
Are we talking about me behind my back? <laughs> All right, guys, stay here. All right, everybody, so before we get started, I have a present for you. This is not an affiliate link, so this is just a coupon code for you guys. I get a lot of questions about my glasses, and I wanted to let you know that Zimp Optical, Z-I-N-F-F, sent me a few pairs of glasses to test out for you guys because I do use a few different sites, and they are bomb. These are really, really great. I love them a lot. I have been wearing them for probably about a week or so. I have wore them woodworking. I have wore them when I run because I'm an avid runner, and they have passed my test. So. This particular pair of glasses are called the Halani, J-E-L-A-N-I. I really like them a lot, but they have a bunch of different stuff for men and women, and they also have sunglasses. You can also get non-prescription if you want. I'm going to pop a discount code right here for you. Use this discount code and it will get you 50% off of your frames and 10% off of your lenses. Again, it's not an affiliate link, but you wanna head over to Zymph Optical, Z-I-N-F-F, -F, and I will pop the website down in the description as well. And I will put the coupon code down in the description just in case you didn't get it right here. But that is my present to you guys. I really, really like these glasses. I have a bunch of different glasses. I, people ask me all the time where I get them. How can I afford a million different pairs of glasses? That's because I get them cheap. I am a cheap person, but these are really well made and super affordable. So if you need new glasses or you're like me and you don't need new glasses and you have a problem, head on over and use that coupon code. All right, let's get started on our nightstand. All right, folks, here is the nightstand. We are going to cut the legs off like we did with the dresser. We're gonna build a new cute little base to have it match. Take that hardware off, put the new little tab, pool tab hardware on, but we are going to be painting this white. And so I am going to show you guys, yes, there is a certain way to paint white and I'm gonna show you. So let's cut these legs off. Okay, so Desiree has never used a jigsaw and I'm gonna show her kind of how to decide what blade she needs. Okay, so first, this is unplugged. This jigsaw is unplugged. And this was the blade that I had before. So this will tell you, this is a speed blade and it'll tell you if it's for wood. This one was a wood blade and it was in there like this. So you put it on the track and you always want the teeth going this way. So the teeth go out because when you do your jigsaw you're gonna hold it like this and so it's gonna cut so make sure whenever you put your blade in you always put it with the the teeth facing forward and this is the track yep and so you line it up with the track and then you're gonna line it up with that and you're gonna push it in and that red part's gonna lock and that's how you know that that blades in so pull it in but here's the problem so even though this is a wood blade I'll show you guys from this angle it is not long enough to go all the way through this leg. So you just need something that's longer, that's all. And usually the sets, you can buy a set of blades and it comes with a bunch of different lengths and kinds and whatever. So we're gonna pull out the jigsaw because I wanna show you different options. The dresser, we used a circular saw. And so now I'm going to have you use a jigsaw for the first time. These are really great for, I use these to cut my copper hardware. If you got something, if you need to cut notches out, it's just a really great tool to have and they're really inexpensive. Even though so. sometimes these tools are an investment, it's something that will last you. So you have to think of it that way. Um, I try to tell people this, I understand that not everybody has this stuff when they first start. I didn't have this stuff when I first started. I'm giving you guys the experiences from my experience, I didn't start with all these tools. We started with pawn shops and Facebook Marketplace and borrowing, you can borrow tools. You can go to your, rent uh, yeah, rent tools, stuff like that. So I'm gonna have Desiree change the blade out so that it's long enough. It's unplugged, especially if you're a beginner and you're not comfortable, make sure your tools are always unplugged when you're messing with anything, adjusting it. You don't cut your fingers off. So we're gonna have her do this blade and then I'm gonna cut this leg and show her how to do it, and then I'm gonna have her cut the other two legs with the jigsaw. Show you how to take this out. So you're gonna stick your finger up here, and you're going to turn it so that it's forward. Okay. It's gonna lock in place. When you turn it forward, it's gonna lock in place, and you'll be able to just pull that blade out. Okay. 
and then you're going to take the other one and just make it on the track push it in and then you want to pull on it too just to double check and make sure and then it's good now we know that this is long enough it goes past that leg so now that we've changed the blade we know that it's going past the wood so it is long enough to cut these legs off and now I'm going to show Desiree how to use this jigsaw and then she is going to use it. Again, the only way you're gonna learn stuff is if you just jump in. If you've got the right teacher and someone that is calm and makes you feel confident and if you are confident as a student and you trust the person who's teaching you, you can do anything. You can do anything. So with these tools and stuff, I know that sometimes they are a little bit intimidating, but so many people use tools. If they can do it, you can do it. Okay, so Desiree, the one thing I wanna tell you about the jigsaw is that it doesn't make super clean cuts. So your miter saw, your circular saws, your table saws will make much cleaner cuts. The jigsaw doesn't make quite as clean of a cut and it's a little bit sh more shaky, not as smooth as a circular saw, but this is really awesome in situations like this. If you need to do like curves and circles, it moves around. You can change this blade and turn it at angles if you want, which we're not gonna do. But a jigsaw is a really good tool. I used to, when I would cut like piping and hardware, I do my copper piping. You can cut a bunch of different stuff with it as long as you have the right blade. People cut tile with these, whatever. So it's, it's compact and really good. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get it where it needs to be. And this, using a jigsaw, you really need to focus on where your line is because it is pretty manual. It's kind of like the difference between driving a manual car and driving automatic. This is something that you have to really pay attention and stay on the line. So I always cut on the outside of the line because if we cut it a little bit bigger right along this line, we can just kind of sand it down and smooth it, which is what you're gonna wanna do anyways. So I'm going to take this. You're going to, there's a trigger right here this one does not have a safety on it. So when you do it, you're just gonna and it's gonna start going. So I start it just like the other saws right before it. You wanna keep the feet level, okay? So that helps you keep it pushed down, keep these feet level on the ground or level on whatever you're cutting. Get a little bit further back, hit the button and then go forward and just cut it. That was a million times easier than using my hand. <laughs> but, and then it goes straight across. I mean, it does, it does a pretty good job, depending on the blade. Some of them are like really clean, but it's not quite as clean as maybe a circular or saw or something. It's so yeah, that. and this right here is a little bit bigger than this. So we'll just sand that down even. We're not gonna play around and try to get it even with the saw. So don't, yeah, don't pull touch it right the trigger. There. Good. Cannon, come here. You don't want to get sawed. Do you want to get sawed? Do you want to get cut? Sit, buddy. Okay, so same thing. Line it up. Make sure you're cutting it on the outside of this line. That line, don't try to get closer to it because we'll just sand it to even okay. it out. So go back a little bit, pull that trigger, and just go for it. Easy. Yep, and even though it's not yeah. super even, yeah. we'll just sand that down. That's okay. that's the better best thing to do. It's kind of like when we cut wood, it's better to cut it over and then trim it. So it's it's always better to overcut. Because you can't put wood back on. Right. It. <laughs> it's always better to overcut and then just sand it smooth with a sander or your hand or whatever. So, what do you think about using the jigsaw? What do you think? The it was easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't look scared. <laughs> not. Scared. Are you scared? Not scared. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so what I would do, yeah, flip the thing around. If you have a chance to work at like a 90 degree angle, I always start with the 90 degree angle and go out just because it really does help line your jigsaw up and brace it. You know, it's easier to start here. If you had to start out here, it doesn't yeah. really line everything up. So. Plus you could almost cut into this. Yeah. If you had an accident. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna take an 80 grit sandpaper and we're going to smooth this down a little bit just to even everything out. So that way when we put our base on here, it's gonna sit flat. 
this is something you'd rather do than try to take the saw and like trim pieces off because then you may over trim it. So the best thing to do is start with an 80 grit, start kind of sanding it down and then I'll smooth it with like a 120 grit just to even it out. So I'm using my surf prep three by four electric gray. We're going to start with 80 grit and we're going to sand it smooth. Sanded even. Because the nightstand is smaller and they're probably, it's not going to be as big of a deal, the base doesn't need to be quite as stout as the dresser. We're going to use a one by three to go to the sides, the back, the, the front, and then we're going to use a one and a half by a one and a half by a three and a half inch board. And we're going to use that for the legs in the front. And then we're going to use a one by three for the legs in the back. So the one and a half by three and a half is for the legs in the front. The one by three is going to be for all the side skirts and then the back.
All right, everybody, so Desiree has cleaned the piece and she went over it with Dixie Bell's White Lightning and then she went over it with some water to get any residual off. We are gonna scuff sand this with a high grit sandpaper just to degloss it a little bit more. We don't wanna get down to the finish, we just wanna take that, that little last bit of the shine off of it. What we're gonna do is use Dixie Belle's Boss in white. It has gray, clear, and white. What this is is a blocking primer and you have to use this before you paint with white. You have to, it is non-negotiable. Okay, so this is the reason why white, sometimes people charge more for white because you always have to do a blocking primer before it. You just don't know if there's gonna be bleed through and sometimes bleed through doesn't show until later and this, what this does is it prevents bleed through and for lighter color. So if you're doing any kind of pastel color, a white, something like that, you want to make sure you use a blocking primer. So when you are painting white, absolutely 110%, you need to use a blocking primer. We're gonna use white. You could use the gray, you could use the clear, but we're gonna use the white just because once we put the white down, it's gonna lay a coat. And then when we put our white paint, which is actually not white, it's cashmere, so it's an off-white, it will, require less coats. So this basically, it, it prevents blade through and this will prevent you from having to use more layers of white because when you paint white, you know, yeah, it takes more layers than most other colors. So again, that's another reason why people charge a little bit more for white because it requires more paint and it requires this prep. And then we'll talk about how I finish with white to get the perfect finish. Okay, so we're gonna scuff sand and then we will put the blocking primer on. You're gonna put two coats of this blocking primer on. You put one coat, wait a few hours, do your second coat, and then you're gonna wait long enough. Usually, sometimes you want it to sit for 24 hours depending on the type of wood. If it's a mahogany or a cherry, you wanna let it sit to lock in. This probably doesn't need to be, we don't need to let this sit for a long time because it's probably not gonna have the kind of bleed through that cherry or mahogany would have. So we're gonna do two coats of this, and then once it's fully dry, we will go in with our cashmere, which is the new fall color. Stay here.
Okay, everybody, we are done with this piece, but shh. So we are done with this piece, but I am actually going to have Desiree stage this and then we're gonna take pictures. This is the piece. It is white. It's like a blank piece of paper. Yeah, <laughs> it is like a blank piece of paper. So we're gonna let Desiree stage this and see what she comes up with. See if I have taught her anything. All right guys, I think Desiree did a pretty good job. We're gonna do the three hats and then she picked these colors, which are very earthy tones and the reds and the orange go together and they go good with the white. So we've got a good natural boho palette. I think she did good. So Desiree did a pretty good job of staging this. We took some nice pictures and this is how I paint white for a flawless finish. And now you know how for to paint future. white. And if you have customs or if you want to mess around with some white or if you never want to paint white ever again, because now you're tired. <laughs> it is a, a tedious process. Yes, it is. Okay, everybody. So everything we use will be in the description below. That's really it. I will see you guys on Thursday. I'm gonna have another video this week. Desiree won't be in it though. Sad panda. <laughs> <laughs> She's gotta get busy jobbing it, dude. Yeah. Building your business. I have a garage full of stuff now. <laughs> yeah, she has a garage full of stuff. She made a logo. You guys will see the cute, cute logo on the pictures. So stay on here and then we'll have staged pictures and you'll get to see Desiree's watermark. It is super cute. She turned the dresser we just did into a little cartoon logo. It's super cute. Hey. Shh. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. This is Des Desiree. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Wish her luck in New Mexico. She's going to do awesome things. Thank All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Wish her luck. And I will see you guys in a couple days. As always, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.